and welcome to the second part of this series on the BBC Micro. This episode we're going to be talking all about its software. So this is going to cover the OS, soft, uh, general applications, as well as games. Unfortunately during the filming of this episode this monitor actually died and this is one of the reasons why this video got uh, held back. So I never got it fixed so in the end I decided just to record one more game to include in the video which you'll see when it happens. So let's get into it. So here we are at the command prompt and from here we can tell we've got 32k of RAM running the advanced disk filing system and we're running BBC Basic. So let's have a look at the OS commands which all start with a star. So let's list our current directory which we do with cat or catalog and so here we can see we're looking at the internal hard drive of the machine. So here we are at root directory of the hard drive. So let's change the directory which we can do with Dira. And so we are now in that directory and so we can list it with star dot. The OS has a whole bunch of shortcut commands which usually end with a dot. So to list the directory you can just do star dot. And we can step into say music one and list it and we can see we've got a whole bunch of files in here. Now these actually are BBC basic programs and we can run them. Now normally to run a BBC basic program you type in load name of the file then run and it would run but in this instance we actually have shortcut commands so we can actually type in chain to load and run the program in one go or we can type in ch dot and so we can pick anything in here and we can run it and yes this is actually a BBC basic program playing music I hope you liked it as well. Now here we can see these programs with the exclamation mark on them. Now an exclamation mark program is a binary program so it's a compiled bit of software compared to the BBC basic programs. So we can also see that we have one called boot. Now this is actually a special name in the OS any program that's called boot will run when you hold down shift and hit break. And here we go, we booted into that program. So in this instance it's actually a menuing software that's included in this hard drive. And we can start programs from it. that program was running the BBC Welcome so if we actually go into that directory BBC Welk, we can see program and that was what it was running so we can actually run any of the other programs here as well so MMC, for example, is actually the software to work with the SD card that's attached to the side of this machine. And we can run it by doing star exec MMC. We actually give it its proper name, star exec exclamation mark MMC. Here we go. We can now see that we're running the MMFF filing system and we can list it as we were before and now we actually have some new 
OS commands to deal with it. So put an engine and a number changes to the floppy disk that's on that number inside the, the card. So this is a quick overview of what we can actually do with the OS. One of the the core things that we know about this machine is it has basic or in this instance BBC basic. Why don't we write a quick program and what does everyone write when they have basic in front of them? Yes we've got to do a print go to 10. Always fun. But let's do a bit more with this. So we've only got two lines. Let's add a lot more. First of all, Let's change graphics mode. As we learnt in the last episode, we've got several modes to work with, with different numbers of colours. So let's change to one of the medium resolution eye graphics modes. So we can display all the colours. Let's put in a quick for loop. Now we know we can go to 0 to 16 for our colours. We can change our colour. With this simple command. And we're going to need a next to keep our for loop working. So let's put in one at line 15. So if we now list our program, we can see we're going to change to mode 2, we're going to loop through all the colours, printing out Goldfish is great, and then at the end we're then going to go back to line 10 which is just Goldfish is great, and then sort of fall off because next isn't linked to anything. So let's fix up that go to, and let's go back to line 2. So if we now run this, we can see we're now cycling through all the colors and we're now not in a great mode for, for working with so let's change mode back so now we're going to want to change the background as well this program is already looking a little funky so we can renumber it and get back to 10, 20, 30. 10, 20, 30 is really just a convention, but it makes it useful so we can insert these additional lines between them. We can even see that the go to was updated to match the number it was going to. Let's do a new for loop. This time we're going to be working with the background. And let's change the background color. Now all the background colors start from 128 so we just need to take 128 plus our background color and now we need to put in a new next. So we now list we're gonna go from all through all the ink colors, all the background colors, displaying our text and looping background again. And here we can see all the various colors and all its various flavors on top of each other in what is probably a quite horrible thing to see. So that's a quick example of BBC Basic. So you see, we were able to write that quite quickly and it runs quite fast. Uh, that was one of the bonuses of BBC Basic. It was actually quite a fast system. 
uh, much faster than most of the other versions of basic that we're doing around. You also had some other specialities, such as being able to embed assembly code into your BBC basic, so you could get even more speed boosts that way. So we'll finish this off by saving it, and we'll just call it GF1, and that is now saved. So if we now look at the machine, we can see GF1, and we could chain it like we did before, or load it, and play it back again if we were ever wanted to uh, assault our eyes. Let's have a look at some of the educational software on this machine because that is where it spent most of its life in schools. So here we are, Granny's Garden, one of the more famous educational programs on the BBC Micro. So let's start. Are we ready to start? Yes. And just listen to this amazing bit of music. <laughs> Sure, teachers love that bit of music. So, once you worked out what the tree was, literally through guessing. You now arrive here, and notice the interesting uses of uh, modes, the graphics. Do we have a password? No we don't. Can we see the cave? Yes we can! Can we go into the cave? Well, nowhere else to go. The cave so secret that it was quite clear. So we've got to rescue six children. So here comes our trusty raven to try and guide us through this game. The main goal of the game was obviously to figure out the puzzles and save the kids. Uh, and if you made a mistake, the granny would get you. And so you had to solve puzzles like this. So the thing that no one wanted to do was see the granny. And there we go, we failed already. So next up, we have Stig of the Dump. Now this was actually for English classes. So to actually play the game you needed to have read the book because the game itself gives you no real indication of what or where you're meant to be going. And the only way you'd know that is by reading the book. You can see there was teacher controls, there was children's instructions. But let's jump straight in. Now, this was effectively an adventure game where you told the game to go north, south, east, west, pick up item, but you also got these full colour images to go along with it, which very slowly drew as you went into each area. You could actually turn them off through a command. So getting east gets us out of our bed. And you would go through the game like this.
and what they taught you to do was to also draw out a map as you played to try and link the various areas and also take what you learnt from your reading into the game. So it tried to teach kids that gaming could be fun, well fun, and educational. We're going to round this out with some games, because everyone loves games. So first up, I thought I'd show Thrust, a fun little Lunar Lander style game, but with its own twists. So as we can see, we can... We can crash a lot. So I try and remember the controls. The idea was to pick up these items and take them off the top of the screen. A simple premise, but as you can see we have limited fuel. And we also have to take out bad guys as well at the same time. So after 30 years, at this point, my monitor died. So I ended up moving to an emulator for the final game, which is Exile. Which is an incredibly impressive game for the BBC Micro. Yes, that was speech. Now, Exile was a huge game. Like, really, really large and also had a, a quite a detailed physics engine running underneath. Your character had momentum. When you picked up items it added to your weight. There was wind that would push you back. Explosions would knock you around. And so you had to explore this vast labyrinth underneath this world with your man in your little jetpack. You picked up weapons, and objects and items, birds, and you didn't die. Instead, you got teleported back to your last recorded position. You could reset where your teleporter was, so you'd only teleport back that far, or even use it in some of the puzzles. But, good game. Well, there we go. Our quick tour around the software of the BBC Micro. So, this machine had far more than what I'd shown. It also had business software, office programs and the like. So if you'd like another video on some of the other software or a deeper dive into some of the topics I covered in this episode, please let me know. I'm more than happy to continue doing videos on this machine to teach everyone about how it was used. So. Until next time, I've been the Goldfish, and this has been Goldfish on Games. Thank you very much.